ಶ್ರೀಮತೇ ರಾಮಾನುಜಾಯ ನಮಃ whether it is social concern or spiritualism or philosophy or science or technology everything is targeted towards a purposeful way of living and the width and breadth of the depth or the wider coverage of the purpose may be different but everything is oriented towards purpose today we have taken a subject which is of utmost concern for the contemporary crisis as well as a tool for all around in our capacity development that is very much necessitated by the modern society by all means and we have taken media society and human rights and it has been well organized somebody asked what is the connectivity mutual connectivity between these two things that is society we are living in the society everybody knows what is society and how to technically how to systematically assemble the role of media and human rights along with society it has been clearly defined in the sociological pursuit that the goal of life is to have a rightful righteous life so human right becomes goal of life and the society has two divisions one is rule and second is role wherever there is a congregation of people who are highly qualified highly committed to engineer the society you know that there are compartments and there is engine in railways like that in the social movement or the social automobile that should be the engineering of the fully committed designated personalities with the talent multi level potent sacrifices and other values which are essential for driving the social movements and all other members of the society they like compartments they have to play the role of subservience obedience and not abiding this so society comes to two major divisions one is a ruling division second is the role making division then coming to the final solution what is the proper way or tool for making all of these things it should be having mass reach it should be having deeper reach it should be having attractive reach that type of multi dimensional multi faceted element that is with the promptitude rapidity mass access deep penetration population instantaneous immigration in the society is media so media is a tool society is a rule and role and human rights is a goal so we are going to talk about rule role tool and goal so it has been logically synchronized that we have taken a composite subject for today's discussion and uh, you know that whenever you talk about society people get bored society is a sore subject and human rights is a hot subject let us start with media which is appearing to be sweet whether it is really or not so we are talking about media according to philosophy philosophy means it need not be theological philosophy or metaphysical epistemological philosophy according to social philosophy even media is nothing but a source that can guide us with ways and values of life by all means and it can have two dimensions major dimensions of that one is education second is entertainment they are not different from each other the proper value is to synchronize or to synthesize both we used to say in shastras that entertainment is nothing but subtle education by which you are attracted by means of this alluration then a subtle methodology of imprinting of the values are given by means of an entertainment base so entertainment is subtle education and sophisticated entertainment is what we call education so it has been so interpreted and related by shastras now recently they coined the hybrid word known as edutainment in which they are trying to bring education in entertainment media or channels so media should have also a certain education mode as well as sophisticated entertainment mode by which the ways and values of life are fully nurtured in the society by means of a responsible mechanism which is coupled with the tool of technology also so this is what we call media so whenever we are talking about media the shastras further classify that there are three media one is trans media second is base media third is mass media what is trans media each and everybody we are our own medium i have my own medium medium is the space or a place in which i can cultivate the seeds of information transform those seeds of information into valuable action and productivity in the society by all means so i am also a medium so personal medium interpersonal medium empirical and experiential qualities are included in trans medium level then the base medium you know that the medium of knowledge instruction sharing whether it is education or entertainment they started with the printing industry 
And now, to the advent of technology, we are having innumerable media systems. Advertising media is there, electronic media, electronic business media, digital media, hyper media, graphical media, multimedia, mass media, print media, publishing media, news media, telecast media, broadcast media, internet, cyber media, innumerable media systems are there in the society. So it is a definition to media that it should be the source of ways and values. That is the commitment or demarcation of what we call media. Then whenever you are coming to media, there is a new subject now coming, but not in a proper direction known as media psychology. Lot of people they are doing research on media psychology. What is media psychology? Studying about the impact or productivity of media in the society and reform the media or to update and upgrade the media standard so that it will be educative, it will be transformative in the society, catering to the global well-being or social well-being. That is known as media psychology. But unfortunately, that angle is not there in this society at all. There are three concerns, spiritual concern, social concern and commercial concern. If you don't mind your personal benefits catering to the need of other people, that is spiritual concern. Wherever there is mutual development, that is known as social concern. Wherever you are not minding about the recipient's benefit at all, and on the contrary, you are trying to exploit the person's weakness and stagnation for self-development, that is known as commercial concern. And commercial concern is there in the media more. That's what we want to rectify. And media, great scholars are there like Dr. Rutledge, Dr. Fromlin, they are all very great scholars in media research. They have maintained a very great research center on media psychology. But they are concerned only with the technical reforms. They are concerned with the technical reforms of media and possible more fusions and how psychology can be taught through media and uh, enrichment of the society or the society is learning how it can be done by media. So everything is commercially orientalized more than the ethical impact or the empowerment impact of media on this society, there is a problem. What is the response? Media psychology, I want to say a few words, which will pave a very strong foundation of the lectures which are going to be given here or anywhere else in the world. Because media response is the society is a medley of various levels of responses. All are not uniform in nature. A person's external appearance or education or a person's empowerment has nothing to do with a person's mental state. A person who is a, a very great person in stability, in ruling and administration, may be having a lot of loopholes inside. So, response is evaluated in terms of somebody, they may have neglect response. Yes, I don't bother with media. Apparent response, neutral response, imprint response, ignite response, lead response, intensification response, guidance response, exasperation response or enhancement response, whatever it may be. So, take the society in good mode or bad mode. So, we have to understand that each and everybody has their own implant inside, their own response mechanism inside and media can create, destroy, intensify, accelerate, decelerate, mitigate. It can do any wonder in the society or blunder in the society. That is the problem of media. And you should understand what is the problem for the society with human rights as well as media. It has been psychoanalytically scrutinized and found out that it is joy psychology. There are two philosophies. You are born to enjoy, like hedonism, you are born to enjoy the world. So enjoy. Boundlessly, endlessly. It is an axiomatic theory that has no evidential basis at all that you should enjoy. The second thing is, it is having eudaimonic justification. You are born to enjoy, so enjoy. Nowhere you are going to enjoy in this world because the world is full of sorrows. So at least enjoy in media or somewhere else. So it is giving such a type of wrong guidance in joy psychology by which everybody is being victimized by the principle of pseudo joy. That's what I told in the seminar that why we are creating serious occasions instead of sportive occasions. When I went to address a college, then everybody was lamenting. It is a cultural festival. We are here to celebrate the anniversary. Why you have brought such a person like a spiritual person who is always serious? And what is here he has to do as a role in a cultural festival? So it is totally paradoxical. It is oxymorous. Then I thought that I just gave a small introduction which has made them understand that I also come for the same purpose. I told that serious occasions are meant for earning joy and sportive occasions to spend them. So you have to earn joy, otherwise how you can spend them. So we have to see that the joy is perennial, that the joy is productive, that the joy is pervasive, that your generations are joyous, neighbors are joyous. So this type of understanding of proper direction or attunement of eudaimonics should be brought to the joy psychology in the society. If it is an interim joy, it is okay. But the impact of media, they have understood. We have seen lot of, there is a special subject known as media criminology. Somebody 
they have been uh, our neighbors in some travel. They told that they are doing some research. I asked the topic, they told that uh, corporate criminology. Actually, everybody is a criminal irrespective of his background, but corporate affairs are more criminalization, the impact is very more intolerable and conspicuous in the society, so he told that he is doing that. So, media related criminology, that people, they are criminalized. How they are criminalized? I can give few examples. You see, you should understand first the psychological impact of what you observe. As I have already told, if you see and forget something, it is okay. But it has a silent influence by which uh, it is getting inside your mind. What is the influential mechanics of uh, this so called media? Apart from being influenced, it creates some sort of behavioral reflection which is molded into attitude remodeling. This attitude remodeling gives three major dangers. First is devastation, ethical devastation where people are criminalized. Somebody may ask, all people are they criminalized? They are not directly criminalized, but apart from devastation, there are two other blunders. One is diversion. Time is killed. Being over contributive or over attributive towards the media, that kills your valuable time. You are diverted from doing something productive. You are not able to digest or assimilate the productive end of the media. So time, your energy, your risk, involvement and commitment, everything is totally bombarded into pieces. That is known as diversion. See, what is devastation, diversion and dilution? A person's intention to go for a wrong way is devastation. A person being incapable of doing any good is known as diversion. A person impotent of both the is known as in dilution. So these are all the various impacts of media. So we should see that not only criminalization, those people who are very much immersed in media, their national commitment, social commitment, domestic commitment, academic commitment, professional commitment, they should be like a splinter instigated by media productivity. Fortunately, the channels and the programs are there, but the programs are buried in silence and they are totally sophisticated, they are buried under silence and darkness so that they are not attempted by people at all. So we should understand the joyous mechanism in a righteous manner so that we can use media in the proper way. There are few problems in the media, innumerable problems are there. First thing is mutual accusation. Why society is in problem? Politics. Why politics is problems of society? They have not elected properly. Why media is wrong? Because the society is not a proper watchdog. So, okay. Society wise, they are not proper watchdog because the media is spoiled. So, there is a, a type of Anyonya Ashraya Dosa. In Sanskrit logic, we used to say, Anavastha Anyonya Ashraya. The fallacy of uh, mutual reliability or mutual dependence as well as infinity that comes in logics. So, it is fallacious to say, that each and everybody is interdependent and intercontributive for their degradations respectively. And we have to seek for your proper silence. It is known as mutual accusation. The first problem of uh, media, they call it as projection. What is projection? That which is worthy, that is not shown at all, or shown in a corner, that is unworthy, that is projected more for commercialization. That is the first problem, which is known as projection. And somebody, they have watched a movie and they told, wow, then I told that the verb is the correct word, the spelling is different, B O B. Uh, violence, obscenity and vulgarity. That is a new acronymous explanation we have to give this wow appreciation to media. So, this is there in the society and it is given in the pretext of, there are three pretexts. One is factual representation. I am showing what is happening in the society. Then exact representation of what is happening in the society. Then presentation of truth in the society. In this pretext they are showing something. How they are showing? Macro projection or macro screening, showing a small bit what is media and what is fabrication, showing nothing as something, something as anything, and anything as everything is known as fabrication. <laughs> <laughs> it is known as a screening, it is macro screening which is done in the society. Repetitive projection, <laughs> like Vedas, which are recited daily, Sandhya, Mana, like that, it is repetitively done and it is sensationalized, it is spice added. See, sensational issue is different from sensible issue. Everything is so artificially made like that, it is in the society. And second thing is that, what is that? It is priority evaluation. Today as in a few magazines we have seen, there are a lot of devastation, there are a lot of uh, ethnic battles in society, wars are there, poverty, malnutrition, everything is an indelible mark in the society right now. But those who are achievers, those who are hard workers, those who are contributors, those who are marks of surrender, submission, sacrifice, they have been projected to create a role model. If the prime role model is created and then the problematic issues are projected, the person will search for the role model and uh, create a positive invitation, then go for the problematic analysis in a solution way. 
It is the proper way of doing that. Priority evaluation is what is positive and abundance. What is negative and positive? If there is positive, the people are collapsed. If there is abundance, the people are just climbing in arrogance. So these positive and negative urge cannot create sharing instincts or settlement instincts in society. The third thing is policy corruption. If somebody starts an anti-corruption club, immediately after starting and running of the club, there comes the leadership problem as well as sharing of the power problem. Then gradually, what are all the policies against which the corruption, anti-corruption bureau has been started to fight again? The same thing there is slowly they creep inside, they peep inside this academy and they will make it either equal or excellent warehouse of all the other evils against which it has been fighting before. It has been fighting before. So this type of policy corruption occurs, lack of networking between NGOs, public, especially women as well as students and as well as young people in the society, that should be a proper networking. So we have emanated in this platform now. We should evolve, we should expand, we should erect and effectualize with proper dealing of three things. One is what is the immediate work to be done, what is the long term work to be done, short term work to be done. Finally, in the concluding session, I want to say what is human rights. Everybody knows what, what is human rights. <laughs> to procure something is different from to address something or to explain or elucidate something. There is cultivation and there is harvest. Cultivation is a person's duty and hard work and harvest is a per person's reward for that. But the risk and reward, they are interchange. The persons who are beautiful and who, those who deserve to get something, they are totally downtrodden, they are totally abandoned in the society and persons unworthy or persons in power survivor of the fittest policy that comes here, wherein by persons, those who do not participate in the beautiful consciousness and execution, they share the benefits. This type of divide that exists in the society that has created a very great shame that we have to talk about human rights after becoming human, civilized science and technology has developed to such a level, we are thinking about invading other planets or colonization other planets, yet is in this era, if we are talking about just being what human to a fellow human being, that we are totally and an anti diluvian era in spite of all the technical facilities which we are seeing now. Second thing, we have to ask a question. Who is deprived of human rights? Human beings. Who have exploited those humans? They are also human beings. Who are going to bring the reform? They are also human beings. Those who are deprived, those who are exploited, those who are going to bring the reform, everybody is human being. But there is a difference. Those who have exploited, they are known as subhuman beings. And those who have got the fear or those who are divisionally isolated in the society, those who are having reluctance, ignorance or any other that imbecilism inside in any other form, those people they are semi-human, they are human in form but they are semi because they cannot convert their wishes into dynamic call or dynamic demand. So they are known as semi-human and persons who are working for them, raising voices for those who cannot ask those who are not allowed to ask and those who are suppressed from being asking, those who are isolated, those who are deeply buried in the murky clutches of uh, ignorance, such people if you raise the voices, we are known as salient humans. So human rights is a process by which the semi-humans are liberated from the subhumans by salient humans like us. So this is a proper definition of what we call human rights. Human rights innumerable campaigns are there. Various other public uh, civil liberty unions have been started, communism it has also done innumerable things, various other things like food, uh, water, shelter, education, job, freedom of expression, religion, everything. It is done for all works of people like tribals, HIV AIDS people, disabled people, unorganized downtrodden people, women, caste separated people, for everybody the society has started but the problem is now human rights association is also a self defense mechanism to protect themselves and to create mass attraction it has been misused or it has been just organized as a fashion and show not reaching the real heart, spirit and pulse of the people who are in deserving need so it should reach in such a manner innumerable regions are there certainly it should be a 10 day seminar with 30 sessions to discuss everything because these human rights they basically they start with various other forms of life. Each and every form of life has its own right. It is so all exhaustive and all encompassing in nature. So it starts with the human rights. It starts with, I have already told about education, religion and other things. Even in each and every ideology, we have to segregate that. In nature, he has told already about nature, environment, then environmental degradation, like the climate changing, and global warming, etc. And natural disasters, it is also a being. And also in a ruling system, administration, law and order, we are seeing detention, we are seeing preventive detention, custodial violence, 
custodial death is there, death sentence is there, extrajudicial killings are there, prisoners' rights are there, it is in one other area. Disappearance, the displacement, the refugees issues, they are also there. Then working places, their uh, discrimination, sexual harassment, prostitution, those things are there. Political corruption is there, disruptionism is there, terrorism is there, anti-socialism is there. Then there is organ trade or organ transplant is there, immoral trafficking is there, and the innumerable things are there, anti liquor anti-drug, innumerable things are there in the society. There are two methodologies, one is tangible and second is subtle. Whatever we are doing in the form of enactment, reforms, advocacy and judicial, everything is in the tangible way. And to create inspiration, involvement, transmission, transformation is the subtle way. So the spiritual people or the social concern, people with the social concern, they have to make the preventive measures by subtle methodology and the tangible methodology, the curative methodology should be handled with people. Unless there is a bilateral parallel travel by both the members of the society, the limited members of the society with mere authority not having reached with the mass, especially towards the heart. You are giving only orders to the brain to learn or to know something. Unless you can reach and touch the heart and create transformation, it is not going to be very equally effective in the society. So that should be a bilateral things in the society. Even human rights, there are innumerable quotes are there, but their real effect is being questioned. There are innumerable debates. Somebody they discuss in a platform as the already existing constitutional rights are exhausting. And the Indian penal code consists of explanations for all penal sections and their respective punishments. Why to create various acts for confusing people, either it is for uh, protection or for some sort of uh, descriptive elucidation, what is the purpose? There was a debate. And second debate is about uh, the cognizance ability of the offense. Already special courts have been created in 1988, there was a court for prevention of corruption act. And 1989 there was a special act for the scheduled caste in tribes. Whenever these people they are posed with a particular accusation, the, according to 193 CRBC, that should be the cognizance of the offence and forwarding by the magisterial authority, which was not there and after several amendments they have made that now. And recently there is a small issue whether the cognizance ability of a human rights advocate or a human rights uh, judiciary, whether it is speculative, implicit or explicit, it is there in demand, it is there in debate and before one or two months there was a very short discussion between few people because each and everybody, when they are reporting about human rights violation, they have to report against the public servants because most of the people, those who are victimizers for these victims, they are probably persons in good post, they are most probably public servants. Then 197 CRPC, it deals with some special uh, cases and classes, how to deal with these people and go forward, whether this type of cognizance is there explicit or it is speculated, that was discussed before one week, that was being discussed by few people in the human rights protection cell. Like that human rights, especially in the Human Rights Protection Act, they have mentioned, it is to deal with uh, all the offences relating to violation of human rights. And what is the jurisdiction of that? What is the ambit of that? How far it is distinguishable from the other rights? Because human rights is an exhaustive subject. Eh? It is a very great a comprehensive subject. And how we have to distinguish the borders of various these things and how we can create the jurisdiction as well as the effective machinery of human rights to take uh, impudent or bold steps against the working machinery like government servants or investigation agencies or even judiciaries in case of judicial accountability and other things. How to forward against these things? So human rights, it is just a show and it should be further nourished with more power, more reachability, more rapidity and more rewarding to the society to bring the real effect for which it has been implanted in the society. So, so how many people they are taking misuse of human rights also? Everybody, anybody is considered to be human and what is about social amputation? There was a legal question between social surgery and human rights. In incorrigible cases, Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita, he has shown innumerable ways how to deal diplomatically and tactically with incorrigible elements which if they are allowed, they will spoil the whole social advanism. So, how to justify that? And human rights should be taught only to the conscience of people. How to teach the conscience of the people? All the power making people or policy making people, they should be sent for a special training. Special training for getting empathy. What is philanthropy? What is social concern? What is moral courage? They should be taught like that. And uh, it is a long term procedure. We have started a small spark. And somebody asked, what is the use of conducting these seminars? Everybody is doing that. Then we told that it should be a perennial fire. Everywhere it should be done. Everybody, they should do that. And every second it should be contemplated. It is a perennial shower of vigilance and action needed for the society. 
and somebody asked you were talking about society and we are only few people here already i explained in my seminar that society does not refer to thousands of flock of sheep it refers to only those limited people rare members of the society society means any individual who thinks for the society aims for the social welfare loves the society and works for the welfare each and everybody is as equal as the whole social mass or even more valuable than that i believe that we the society are present here without minding the qualitative enrichment qualitatively with the whole hearted involvement we have assembled here we have created a small scintillation that it become a radiant and effulgent fire totally it should the extirpate the nations in the society and create light of human rights awareness to love the fellow beings if anybody is not who is a human being number one who is human is not a human being the person who has similar response or likely response or charitable response towards his fellow beings as an extrinsic product is a human being let us be human let us be more human and being human itself is equal to divine let us take the charge into the mind take a strong decision and following the footprints of these people that there be university that there be strong courses and also there are courses but more training more teaching more practice it should be fed from the breast of the mother it should be given by the food that we take and it should be given by the teachers and imparting of divine knowledge it should be brought by worship and rituals what we do in our religious ambience it should be human rights awareness imparting and collective well being should be the droplet that should be secreted from each and every act of human being let us take this noble deed in our mind and proceed towards the pathway of success which is nothing but all round happiness peace and harmony narayana narayana